when software is a thousand times faster to build, it lets you design an entirely new kind of software platform. It lets you break down silos between software services, give users control of their data, and create an abundance of choice and innovation in software. This is our goal at Dry.io. So today, most of your data is separated behind separate software silos. Here's what this means and how we address this inside of Dry.io. So there's this notion of universal search. Today, suppose you're organizing a software project and you're using a bug tracker, a task management system, and a group messenger. Right now, if you want to search for something, you have to search over all three pieces of software. So it's hard to get a unified view of what's going on. With dry.io, all you need to do is make one search with one keyword, and then you get results over all your applications. So for example, here we see that that one search for DB got us issues with DB in it, um, tasks with DB in it, and messages talking about the DB. <clears throat> Another way dry.io eliminates software silos is to provide a common structure across applications. So for example, in your messaging application right now for your software project, you might uh, create a common, you might create a folder structure or a channel structure that organizes your project and communication. Um, but the, that if you want to go ahead and use that inside of your uh, messaging application or inside of your task manager, or inside of your bug tracker, you have to repeat that organization. It's not there for you. But with dry.io, it's uh, built uh, there for you automatically. You, you organize your project once and it just shows up in all your applications. So what you saw here is that it shows up in your task manager um, and it shows up in your fact tracker. Integrated workflows are another example of eliminating software silos. So today, it's very common to, in a software project, for example, to be uh, ha have your bugs and your issues tracked in one software package and have a discussion in that package about those bugs and issues. Um, but then uh, you'll be talking about the same bugs and issues uh, in your messaging application. Um, and so you have this weird situation where you have uh, two parallel conversations about the same thing across two different applications. In dry.io, we, we eliminate that. So here we have a bug tracker with issues and comments. And when you go to our group messenger, you'll see that for every one of those issues in the bug tracker, there is a channel in the messenger that has that conversation in it. So you can have a coherent conversation about your project without having to switch back and forth from one app to another. At dry.io, we want to give users as much control over the data as possible. We do this in several ways. One is with local encryption. In dry.io, we let users encrypt their objects locally on their own web browser um, so that we have no way of seeing uh, what their data actually is. So for example, let's say we want to record or remember our, an answer to a security question. So for example, say your favorite flavor of ice cream is vanilla, but you don't want dry.io to know that. So basically we let you locally just encrypt that data right there. And so you see it show up there. Um, encrypted, and that's all Dari.io sees. If you want to decrypt that later, we let you do that easily. On Dari.io, we make it very easy for you to export your data. So you don't have to worry about putting a lot of data and a lot of work onto Dari.io and not being able to get it off and move it to other applications. So for example, in any app, we have this export button and you go and you click that button and you get a machine readable dump of your data. Right now it's just uh, what you see here, but we're going to enable a REST API for that soon as well. 
Another feature of data integrity on Draw.io is being able to store data on a blockchain. This has a lot of benefits. So here's one example of that. Let's say you want to make a prediction about where the DAO is going to be at the end of 2019, and you write that on your blog. You can basically store that prediction right now in a blockchain that's unforgeable, unchangeable. And so you go back in the future and prove that you've done that. Another important feature of Dry.io is that your data is private by default. So for example, any particular object can only be seen by you and it's private. But if you want to share it with someone, we make that very easy. You just type the name of the person, you share it. Um, also in Dry.io, we don't let developers see your data. So normally in most uh, cloud software delivery systems, uh, the app developer hosts your data and has access to it. In Dry.io, the app developers don't. Uh, they basically put their apps on our platform, rerun the apps on your data, but they never actually get to see your data. On Dry.io, code is transparent. For example, let's say you have a social network that you've built on here and you want to make it totally clear to users exactly what you're doing with your data and how you're doing it, it's very easy. All you need to do is go here, and any user can do this. Click your code, and there you go. You see the code, and you see exactly how the data is being used and what's going on. When you make software much faster to write and much cheaper to write, then one result is that you have a lot more software, a lot more choice competition and innovation and so that leads to several benefits. So one example is lots of important needs for software that haven't been met because it's too expensive to create or because you can't find a developer to do it for you are now easy to meet. So here are some examples of apps we've created that were super fast to create that meet needs that people have asked us about um, and really weren't that feasible prior to Dry.io. So one example is this semantic Wikipedia, we call it, for organizing genetic information. It's basically a place to store data and information about genes. You can organize them, your genes, into pathways. You can click on a gene and see a summary of the information on the gene, see the upregulators of the gene, downregulators of the gene, and various information like that. You can have, um, you can also, um, look for references uh, that sort of justify the scientific information here. And you can chat about this stuff with your uh, colleagues that you've shared um, the genetic records with. So it's basically a nice sort of little semantic Wikipedia for organizing information about genes. And the nice thing about it is that it only took about 110 lines of code. So something you could really do in an afternoon that before would have taken weeks. Another example of an app that was easy to build on Dry.io was the social network we showed in another video. It's basically a social network with the addition of the ability to filter out topics that you don't really care about, the ability to do search over your posts, and just basically a lot of the other standard features you'd want, a social network. Um, this was super easy to build. It just took one or 200 lines of code the kind of thing that normally would have taken weeks, we built it in a day or so. Another request we've gotten for an app is a blogging platform where we can post individual articles to Ethereum. The benefit of that is that you can write things on Ethereum and know that that post was made at a certain time and not forged. So for example, let's say you want to make predictions about what the stock market's going to do. Easy thing to do here. You basically add a predictions category for your post. Um, you add a new article. Uh, here it's a very simple article where you're just basically going to predict the Dow at the end of next year. You type the title. Then you type what your prediction is. Then you basically just save it to Ethereum. 
So now if you're right next year, you can brag about it and, and people and point them to this blog post on Ethereum and people will know that you did post it at that time. Just took, it took less than 60 lines of code. So again, something that normally would have taken weeks and a lot of expertise, you can just build here in an hour or two. So another app we built was this local chat application. So the idea is, suppose you're at a conference or you're at a specific location and you want to talk to the people around you. For example, the people who are seeing a talk with you or the people who are waiting for you on, at the train stop. So we, had this, we created this app where you do that. You basically create chat rooms that are tagged to a particular location in space. Um, you can go click on a chat room. You can chat with people on there. You can share the chat, with, chat room with other people and so forth. And that was a very easy application to build. It just took us about uh, 30 or 40 lines of code. On dry.io, you get to choose the best software for your data. So right now with most software application services, you basically have to use the interface that the software provider gives you. So if you have a bug tracker or a messenger uh, and you're using it's a cloud-based one, you basically have to use the interface those companies provide you. Not with dry.io, you get to choose. So for example, here's a bug tracker we built. We use it internally. It doesn't look very good, um, but it's very useful for us. But let's say somebody didn't like using that bug tracker. They thought it looked ugly. They can write another app for it for the same data um, and create an interface they want for it. So it's an example basically of how in dry.io, the end users can choose what software they use for particular data. They can move back and forth between the two. So when you give people choice over what software they use for their data and you make it super easy for lots of competitive software services to be written, you'll get a lot of innovation in software. And because software underlies all of society more and more, this will lead to a lot of innovation and progress. So that's our quick overview of what we're trying to accomplish here with dry.io. To learn more, go to dry.io.